Hello YouTube, this is Fresh coming at you guys with our first Season 6 Patch 611 guide and we are covering Fiora, the Grand Duelist. I long for a worthy opponent. Fiora is a really strong top laner that can bully the crap out of a lot of the top laners out there. She's a champion that Trinity Force works well on as well, so she is a champion that benefited from those changes that came in 611. Fiora has a number of ways she can help her team win the game. The first one, being as she has a lot of attack damage, is she can dive into the enemy team and focus on their carries, taking those out. Since she does have true damage in her kit, she can also fight with your carries to take out the bruiser and tank so you can quickly get to the backline. Finally, if your team is way behind, she is a great split pusher and she can beat a lot of champions 1v1, so she has that as well. So let's explore this further by looking at her pros and cons. One thing Fiora's got going for her is her high mobility. She's able to jump around with her lunge, and she gets increased movement speed from her passive and ultimate when she does hit vitals. Her passive does give up to 50% bonus movement speed when you do hit a vital, and this is doubled when you have your ultimate, so you can have up to 100% bonus movement speed, which makes you insanely maneuverable. She's also got high base damage, and she even does true damage. The true damage once again comes from her passive, which is when you hit a vital, you do a bunch of extra bonus true damage. This makes Fiora one of those champions that can actually bring down tanky champions rather quickly. Fiora's most skill-based ability is probably her Riposte, which actually blocks all incoming CCs and damage. For 0.75 seconds, you can actually block any of the crowd control or damage coming in, and this actually helps you 1v1 stuff like Jax. Jax is a rather hard matchup, but if you're able to do this on his stun over and over again, you can actually kick his ass. Fiora is actually a great split pusher as well, as she can 1v1 a lot of the champions out there and can clear those minion waves really quickly with her Hydra. This can be great, because even if her team is losing the game, she can still carry the game by pushing top lane via the split push. Although Fiora is a strong champion, she still has a bunch of cons which we have to discuss. The first one is, she's rather squishy early on, and this can suck considering you are a melee champion. You can help negate this if you are using your W effectively, and you're negating a lot of the high damage abilities the enemy champion does have. Fiora will do a ton of damage, but she may have trouble getting onto some of her targets considering she can't all in that effectively pre-level 6. Her abilities do have high cooldowns early on in the game, so she's not able to do a ton of damage insanely fast. She's also a rather skill-based champion in the fact that she has to make sure she hits her vitals for the increased damage and she has to use her W to block a lot of the return damage. Or CC, of course. If you can block CC, that of course is the best thing to block. Early on, she can feel kind of weak against certain champions, but later on in the game, she can really go to town. There are two very viable mastery pages on Fiora, and the first one here that I'm showing you is the Fervor of Battle way. This is great if you are in an easy matchup and you know that you're going to be able to bully your opponent with the Fervor of Battle. Since Fiora can attack relatively quick with her kit, she can get her Fervor of Battle up really fast and do an insane amount of damage that way. It is by far the best offensive tree for her. Another great mastery setup is 18 Resolve, grabbing Grasp of the Undying. I really like to use this mastery page against champions I know are going to be trying to bully the crap out of me in the lane like say a Darius. You of course won't have as much damage as if you went 18 Ferocity, but you will have a lot more sustain and lane phase will go a lot easier for you. Both of these are very viable options, and they are personal preference. I do see a lot more people going for 18 Ferocity, but 18 Resolve is great as well. For our runes, we go 9 Greater Marks of Attack Damage, 9 Greater Seals of Armor, 9 Greater Glyphs of Magic Resist, and 3 Greater Quintessences of Attack Damage. In total, this is 15 Attack Damage, 12 Magic Resist, and 9 Armor. Since you can combo damage so quickly on Fiora, you don't really need Attack Speed Reds, so we just take the Marks of Attack Damage. Now one alternative to the magic resist would be cooldown reduction runes. This kinda depends on the build you want to go for. When we go for a Trinity Force build on Fiora, we only get 30% cooldown reduction, but if we do go for the Black Cleaver build, we will have the 40%, so it depends on the build. 30% cooldown reduction is honestly fine on Fiora, but some people insist on having the 40%. If you want to go for a Trinity Force build and the build that I do show later on, then you can simply just get 10% cooldown reduction from your blues and you'll be fine. By nobody's surprise, our summoners for top lane Fiora are Flash and Teleport. These basically are the go-to runes for any top laner and Fiora is no exception to the rule, especially since she is a good split pusher and she does need that teleport. Flash, like I'm sure you're all aware, is great for offensive and defensive uses. You can use it with your lunge to all in somebody from a very long distance. You of course can use the spell very defensively and flash away from your opponent so you don't die. Awesome. Since top laners are kind of on their own little island in a 1v1, teleport gives you the opportunity to make it to your team fights or objectives. 
Fiora is one of those champions that can farm top lane all day, pushing the lane, and when she does finally need to show up to a fight, simply teleport and then go back to the top lane after. So now it's time to look at each of Fiora's abilities, starting with her passive, which is called Duelist's Dance. This is actually a big part of her kit, considering it's insanely important to proc those vitals so you deal extra damage and all the other benefits you get from it. Now you may ask, Fresh, what are those other benefits? Well, I'm going to tell you. You heal for between 25 and 110, based on level, whenever you do proc one. You also get granted between 20 and 50% bonus movement speed that decays over 1.75 seconds when you proc it as well. That, combined with the 2% plus 4.5% per 100 bonus AD of target's maximum health as bonus true damage, means proc this damn vital. It does have a 90 degree kind of arc that you can see around the champion, and it's not that hard to proc at all. You have lots of mobility, and you have a lunge, so make sure that you do hit the champions on those sides. You have a lot of time to go in and proc these vitals since they do last for 15 seconds. Now, it's not the end-all be-all because a new one does get identified right after, but you have lots of time to go proc on that side that you have seen for 15 seconds. Your main ability that's going to get you to those vitals is your Q, and it's called Lunge. Basically, this is a short-range dash that goes in the target direction, and it has a 400 range. Now if you do stab somebody with this ability, it reduces the cooldown by 60%, which is pretty damn important. At level 1, this has a whopping 16 second cooldown, so, you know, more than having that is a pretty damn good thing to do, so make sure you do it. It is worth noting that this is the ability we max first, so it does go down with level, so it's not as big of an issue, but lowering the cooldown is always important no matter what, honestly. This ability does do physical damage and it applies on hit effects. It does between 65 and 105 base plus between 55 and 115 percent bonus AD. This is really nice damage which is one of the main reasons we do max this. The main prioritization of this ability is vitals that are facing Fiora. Once you proc that vital you do a lot of extra damage and you gain movement speed so fighting your enemy champion is a lot easier. Next is another really important ability Fiora has and it's called Repost. It's her W. A lot of the champions out there could really shit on Fiora if she couldn't use her W effectively. When you do activate this, you parry all incoming non-turret damage and hostile crowd control effects for the next 0.75 seconds. Jax and Irelia are champions you should see more often in the top lane considering Jax did get buffed and Trinity Force did change in a beneficial way for those two champions. Both of these champions do have stuns, and if Fiora is able to block those stunning them in return, she will have a great chance of bringing down that enemy champion. These are two very skill-based matchups, and they are very dependent on how good Fiora is with her W. Champions like Jax, they're relatively easy to know when they're going to crowd control because they do activate their ability and they start doing that sound so you know when the stun is coming so you can activate your W. Other champions like Aurelia can quickly do their stun whenever they want to. Now it is most common for it to happen when she does dive onto you, she will follow that up with a stun right away, but she may try to juke you and she may not do it right after. She may hope you do your repost right after she jumps on you so she can wait that out and then stun you afterward. This is a very skill based move and can be very game breaking if properly used. This is a great ability defensively as well if you are trying to run away from a champion, they shoot something at you, you can turn around, repost it, and keep running away. Fiora's last basic ability is her E, and it's called Blade Work. Very simply put, Fiora's next two basic attacks gain bonus attack range and 50% bonus attack speed. The first basic attack can't critically strike, but it does slow its target by 30% for one second, and the second one is guaranteed to critically strike for bonus critical damage. Now one of the best parts about this ability is the fact that it resets Fiora's auto attack timer as well. Now there is a way to actually get off 5 attacks in 1 second, and the way you do this is by using your E. First you open up with an auto attack, and then you use your E to reset and you auto attack again. Then you can lunge towards your target and use your Hydra and follow it up with another auto attack. Try your best to make sure that you do hit the enemy champion with your Q so you do get the cooldown refresh as well. This is a very simple combo to pull off and can do a ton of damage if you do have the gear. So that brings us to Fiora's ultimate, which is called Grand Challenge. Passive part of this I kind of mentioned before, it's uh, Duelist's Dance bonus movement speed is increased and it's doubled so that can give you up to 100% bonus movement speed from your passive. This is a great part of the ultimate considering you do get 100% bonus movement speed and running around your target hitting all those vitals can be rather easy when you're moving that quickly. When she does activate this ability, she challenges the enemy champion for 8 seconds and highlights all 4 vitals in the area and increases that movement speed. 
Now as long as she triggers one vital before her target dies, which she should because there's a 360 degree circle around them sh that she has to hit so you can't really miss it, she will create a victory zone that heals her and ally champions in it for two seconds. The main goal here of course is to get all four vitals because you will do a ridiculous amount of true damage when you do so. The maximum heal is between 400 and 700 plus 300% bonus AD. That is a lot of health for you and your teammates. The victory zone's duration is increased by one second per vital hit up to a maximum of five. While ground challenge is in fact, duelist dance does not identify new vitals on her target. So you have those four vitals to hit and that's it. But honestly, that's enough vitals, trust me. So the best part of this ability, although the heal is really nice, is the fact that you have four vitals to hit at the same time. On tanky champions, hitting those four vitals will deal an insane amount of true damage and will pretty much kill any champion out there. In a team fight, this will then drop a heal, which will be great for getting your health back up if you did get low on that enemy champion and continuing the fight, killing the rest of the enemy champions. Alright, so with all the abilities covered, let's look at the ability leveling order so you know when to take those abilities. So first priority, like always, is your ultimate and it is Grand Challenge. You take it at 6, 11, and 16. Our first basic ability we take is our Q, which is Lunge. We take it at 1, 4, 5, 7, and 9. This is great for jumping around so we can get to those vitals. We then move into our E, which is Blade Work. We take it at 2, 8, 10, 12, and 13. This gives some really nice attack speed and range and lets us do our combo. Last up is our W, which is Repost. We take it at 3, 14, 15, 17, and 18. We just need that one point early on, so we are able to block all sorts of damage and crowd control, so we are actually able to fight 1v1. Our item build starts with a longsword, some health potions, and a warding totem. It's best to start with a longsword if possible, because it moves directly into the Ravenous Hydra, and we don't have to waste all that money on a Doran's Blade. In 611, with the Trinity Force changes, there are two different types of core you can go for. You can go for either the Trinity Force core or the Black Cleaver core. In both cases, you get the Ravenous Hydra before and the Ionian Boots after. So the Trinity Force early core is the Ravenous Hydra, Trinity Force, and then Ionian Boots. And of course, that means the Black Cleaver core is a Ravenous Hydra, the Black Cleaver, and then Ionian Boots. Now, there are a few factors in determining which one you want to go for. The Trinity Force is better if A, you're ahead of the enemy champion, B, the enemy team is squishier, and C, you just want to generally deal more burst damage. You would then want a Black Cleaver if A, your team is full of heavy AD and the enemy has many tanks, B, you generally prefer to be more tanky, or C, you don't have the money for the expensive Triforce. Now both items are very very strong on Fiora, but Triforce deals more damage and should always be built if you're not too far behind an enemy champion and they can't build much armor. Ionian Boots are generally the best boots on her, considering she does need a lot of cooldown reduction for her abilities because they do have high base cooldowns. Still, all the other boots are great options. You could get the Tabbies if they do have a lot of AD or auto attack heavy team, the Mercs if they do have a ton of CC and you can't use your W on all of them, or you just get swiftness because you need to move around more often. Now when we continue on with our full build, we next add a Spirit Visage. This gives pretty much Fiora everything she wants. She gets a bit tanky from the 500 health, she gets 55 magic resist, 200% base health regen, and 10% cooldown reduction. That's some of that much needed cooldown reduction, and she even has a nice passive from this ability which increases all healing received by 25%. She does have that part built into her passive when she does hit a vital she does get some healing so this actually increases that even more. Spirit Visage is a fantastic item on Fiora. She then moves into a dead man's plate for that much needed armor and 500 more health. The passives on this ability are actually really nice as well considering she gets to move around quicker and she has a nice passive on it called Crushing Blow which deals a lot of damage. That's another fantastic item and gives Fiora everything she wants. The last item in the build is very very interchangeable, but I did put a frozen mallet. It gives 650 health and adds 40 attack damage as well, which is really nice to have. It's even got an on hit which lasts 1.5 seconds and slows by 40%. Since Fiora can attack so quickly, this will basically be a permanent 40% slow on targets when she is on top of them. I personally like my Fiora a little tankier than the ordinary Fiora, which is why the Frozen Mallet is in this build, but there are a ton of alternatives which I will get into right now. So the first alternative is the Bloodthirster. This is just if you want to be that Fiora that goes around deleting people as quickly as possible. 
This will give you a lot more lifesteal as well for some increased sustain and a nice little shield that actually makes you a little bit tankier, although this is a full attack damage item. If you are against an AP heavy team and you want more magic resist, but you don't really want to lose out on getting some attack damage, Maw is a great alternative as well. This gives you 55 attack damage, 40 magic resist, and even gives you 10 armor penetration as well to get through any armor. The passive part of this item is actually really, really nice, and it enables you to not really get bursted when you do take a ton of AP damage at once. When you dip below 30% health, simply you gain a shield, and that may enable you to stay in team fights. Sterex Gauge is actually a great alternative as well, and pretty much for the same reason. The passive acts kind of the same as it gives you a shield, which avoids you getting bursted. With this item, you still get 400 health, so you remain tanky, but you also get plus 25% base attack damage, so you can still put out some nice damage. It's a very comparable item to Maw, although cheaper, but it does not give any armor or magic resist, but the shield is really, really nice to have on Fiora. Another alternative you could get, and I'm sure you guys are realizing how many there are and how well Fiora itemizes, is a Mercurial Shimitar. This adds a nice 65 attack damage, 35 magic resist, and 10% lifesteal. The best part of the item is the Quicksilver, which removes all crowd control debuffs and also grants 50% bonus movement speed for one second. This item would be a great alternative against those teams that have tons and tons and tons of crowd control and you simply can't block them all with your W. Yumu's Ghostblade is also one of those really nice items that fits on pretty much any AD champion that wants to remain really mobile. Since we are at 30% cooldown reduction with our Trinity Force build, this also fits in really, really nicely as we get that extra 10% cooldown reduction. Wow, I think it just said cooldown reduction insanely weird. But anyways, that will get you at that 40% cap and you will not be able to whine about it, I suppose. The item's got a great activate, which gives you some movement speed and attack speed, so you can delete those enemies rather quickly and you get some armor penetration from the item as well. Finally, we arrive at our last item. Holy shit, there's a lot of friggin' alternatives for this. So anyways, Banshee's Veil. 300 health, 70 magic resist, and 100% base health regeneration. The best part of the ability, once again, is not in those stats. It's in the fact that you do get a passive shield that goes up every 40 seconds, blocking a spell. Simply another very good tanky item against high AP teams if you do have a lot of spells that you can block, which will make a massive difference. Now usually I'd be putting a matchup page right here, but honestly Fiora can beat any top laner really if you can use your W really well. A lot of the champions that have stuns are the ones that can be really effective against Fiora. Stuff like Jax, Pantheon, Riven, Renekton, anything like that can be really hard for Fiora if she's not using her W to stop their stuns. The best way to do it is try to bait people into stunning you, but using your W right before they actually do it. Fiora is a really squishy champion early on, and if they do land these stuns, you're going to die. The main problem about making a guide on how to use your stun effectively against these champions is people do them different. People try to bait them all the time, people will just try to stun right off the bat. It's something you're going to have to figure out in the game yourself. Champions like Darius and Singed can actually be really hard for Fiora as well. They're a bit too tanky to all in, and they do relatively good damage as well. The best thing you can do is, of course, use your W as effectively as possible. Try to stop Darius's little bullshit spin thing, and try to stop Singed from tossing your salad. So, with the note on salad tossing, our guide has concluded. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, as there's going to be a lot more coming in patch 6.11. For more of our guides, you can go to our website, which is www.egamingtv.com, and you can also find us on Twitter, at egaming underscore TV. We do a lot of skin giveaways on Twitter, so if you do want to enter those, make sure you go over to Twitter and you send us a follow. You can also subscribe to our Let's Play channel, which will be starting relatively soon. It can also be found in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the other guides. If you guys, of course, do have any comments or suggestions, please leave those as well, and I will be sure to respond.